Hello, fellow Bubble developers. Nikolai Markovich from Echo Lake Technologies, echolaketech.com. In this video, I'm going to show you how to send data to pop-ups. And in addition, I'm going to show you a couple of data structures um, that I think you'll find useful in your designs. Uh, before I get to the demo, though, if you do like these videos, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I do appreciate it. So let's do a, a demo here. So I've got these two buttons and the first one here has uh, one way of sending data to the pop-up. And I'm doing this uh, repeating group here with a, uh, a search feature. And then the second one here, it's, it looks very similar, but I, I'm sending the data into the repeating group here without using a search. So let's jump into the, the design here. And I'm going to start out with the, the data structure. So um, actually, I take that back. I'm going to go over to the, the design and just start with the button here. Um, so I do have a repeating group uh, from a pre-existing uh, design that I had, and I'll put the link for, for that below. Um, I've added this these buttons here, this first one. Uh, let's look at the workflow, which basically all it's doing is displaying data into this this pop-up here and it's sending the current users uh, current cells user information and then it opens the the pop-up so this is important um, and this is similar with groups as well but for pop-ups what we want to do here is we want to go down to element action and display data and then the pop-up user classes and the data display is the current cells user. Okay, so that's how we send the data to the pop-up. And then the next thing we want to do is element actions, and then we want to show the pop-up. So that's how we get to these two steps here. And the other button is a very similar workflow. Uh, it's pretty much identical. Uh, so similarly, we are going to display data into the other pop-up, and we're going to show the other pop-up as well. So these two workflows are nearly, they're, they're pretty much identical except for the pop-up that they're sending the data to. Now let's take a look at the pop-ups. So the first pop-up here, and you'll notice it's of, of type user. And just to jump back to the workflow here, Right, we're sending the current cells user. So that's the data that we are sending to the pop-up. And then here I've got a couple of text fields and it's basically the parent group's user. And the parent group being this pop-up here. Uh, the first name and then the parent group's last name. And then here I just put a, a simple comment that this is the pop-up that has the repeating group with, with a search. Let me just finish this text here, show you how that is done if you're not already familiar. So basically it's inserting dynamic data, parent groups user, and then down here I have the first name. And then similarly, I do that for the parent group user's last name as well. So that's how we get that data into the text field here. If you're not familiar with the uh, text element, it's just simply this one right here. And again, parent group's user and first name. So that's how that was done. And over here we have the repeating group. Okay, so for this repeating group, again, this one is done with a search. Now the type of content here is, is class because in here, and it is showing the classes for this individual. So I need to make sure that my repeating group is of that type class. And then I have a search. And so basically I need to search for classes. And then in here it's going to be students contains parent groups user. Now I'm going to just jump over here for a moment to the to data and then data types. And then for class. Okay, and then over here, I've got the class category, the class name. So the class name are things like the 
calculus, chemistry, physics, and so forth. I've got the students. Now this is a list of users, as in teacher is also a list of users. So just real quick, if you're not familiar, to create a new type. So all I did before was go to type in class here, like that. And now I'm actually going to have two classes. Um, and Bubble does distinguish between these two. So the other thing here is to create these data fields, so student, and on here, these are of type user because these are users in the app. And then you want to check here, field is a list. And what this basically allows, list of users, is that I can use this data field and I can populate it with multiple users. Now let's just jump over here to app data and I'm going to show you that uh, classes. So I've got a bunch of classes already created from an earlier video and I'm just going to click on the pencil here to look at this particular one which is physics and you can see in here I've got multiple users and I can manually go in here and add I've got other users in my database user 2 for instance and add them and then save it. Okay so now you can see that we have multiple students for each one of these classes. So physics has got these three, chemistry has got these two, and calculus has got those two students in it. Now back to the design here, I'm going to do a search for student contains parent groups user. Okay, let me just walk through how to create this constraint for the search. All right, so students. And you have this option here, or these options, and the reason why it's contains versus sometimes you'll see an equal, and the reason why it's contains is because, if you recall back to the data here, there are multiple users. So I want to do a search to see if the user from that repeating group cell is in this list of students. And I do that by this search for, and then the students contains and then the parent group's user. So this tells Bubble, again, to look at the classes um, and does it contain that student that's the parent group user. So that's how we get the search for this one. And then all I have here is current cells uh, class name. So this is basically, again, the list of classes that this user is signed up for. So it's just simply click here, current cells class, and then the class name. And that's as, it's as simple as, as doing that for this, for this pop-up here. So this one is doing it with that search. Now the other pop-up that I have doesn't use a search. The text fields here are the same. Uh, this one here, I basically put without instead of with. So this, these um, two repeating groups are nearly identical. There's a repeating group here. But you'll notice on this repeating group, we're looking for a class as well. So that's the same as the other pop-up. But now the data source isn't a search. It's parent group users classes. Now I'm able to do this without using a search because if I come over to users, and actually let me go to data types for users I have classes here and you see it's also a list of classes so this allows me to add multiple classes for each one of the users and if I look at over here on app data and uh, let me see here there is user 6 I think was the name okay so yes user 6 here has these additional classes or not additional these are the classes that that person is signed up for and so because my data structure is set up such that I have classes as a data field I'm just going to jump over here classes as a data field again a list of classes that in the design over here all I need to do is use parent groups users classes because classes is already a list, 
repeating groups are used for lists and because of the data structure, I don't need to do a, a search. Now this is a very nice option because one thing with searches is that they do take up a little bit uh, longer for processing. And if my data structure is set up right, I can eliminate the need for the searches. The other thing just to share with you is while this example is for classes, you'll see I have other fields in here, data fields under user. So list of days of week, list of text, list of users for my contacts, list of pop-up messages here. So all of these that I'm going through pop-up messages, so pop-up messages here, list of real estate properties. So real estate properties is over here. So basically what I'm doing is I'm creating a, a data field for the user of all these different lists. So because of that, I don't need to do searches if I were to put them into a repeating group in a pop-up, for instance. And that saves some performance so you don't have to do searches. And that's basically all there is to it. Oh, let me just quickly show you about the repeating group. So it's under containers, repeating group. You just add that in here. So this one um, is going to be of type uh, class. And now I actually have to go back because you see there's two classes in here and I'm not sure which one is which. Actually, I can go and do this since I didn't really intend to create two classes. Okay, so this is class two, like that. Now if I go back over to the design, so I'm kind of doing this on in real time here for you so you can see some of the things that happen within Bubble. So now I've got class and class two, and I actually want class. And then here, the other thing I did is the default is four rows. I just changed it to two rows. The other thing is it had vertical scrolling as the default. And that's basically, if you have a long list, that'll go scrolling through. I knew this was going to be a short list for this demo, so I just picked full list on it. And then for this one, parent groups, classes. So again, parent groups, classes. Just like that. And then within the, the repeating group itself, I'm going to come back up to visual, put in text. And then it's current sales class, class name. Let me just make this a little bit bigger so you can, there we go, see it just like that. And that's how you add the repeating group into the, uh, the pop-up. Again, if you like these type of videos, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I do appreciate it, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks.